and from class 8 till we, uh, we saw participants who have finished their uh, postgraduate as well. So a great mix or balance of number of people in the batches too. And then for the tour guide training program for batches 1 and 2, we saw participants from 6 districts, active participants. So the 6 districts are Kohima, Dimapur, Mokchung, Hipiri, Pek, and Wokak. So they were uh, they saw potential in this training and in this career as well and some of them they even you know decided to stay in Kohima to attend the training program for 40, uh, 30 working days and um, due to the initiative of the different leaders in the different uh, respective places through operators as well they encourage young people to attend the training program and then some uh, we even uh, accommodated people from Kipri in this youth net office uh, and then they are here today, they have successfully completed the training program. So the objective of the training program is to make sure that whoever have registered, uh, they are eligible, these candidates are eligible and qualified to pursue, and competent to uh, pursue tour guiding as a professional career now and be really serious about it. And we're really happy and then you, we will also love to hear from you so uh, the they have a few uh, special items prepared in their happiness uh, in celebration with us as well. So first, I would like to give the time to the group for the special song, followed by um, a speech from a fellow uh, a participant on an entry. So please take your time. It's good to be alive today. Our respected uh, chief guest, Sir Niba Bruno, Minister Planning and Coordination, Land Revenue and uh, Parliamentary Affairs, Governor of Nagaland, our guest of honor, Sri Aikido Jimomi, Commissioner and Secretary Department of Tourism, Government of Nagaland, and uh, our mem <laughs> our mem director, founder and peer tours, our colleagues. I'm really privileged to stand here on behalf of the trainees. We are living in a world where a lot of things are going on. The world is advancing. Likewise, we young people need to upgrade our skills, our talents, and you know, we are living in a society where a lot of competitions are going on. And the young Naka people are also very talented, are also really gifted, and we are all called by the Lord in different ways. And we in the government, the Nagaland government, we in the tourism department, we in our uh, youth net come up with all this kind of uh, uh, skills development programs and a lot of you know training, different activities. You know, it's like a placings for all of us, for the young people especially. And um, you know, the tourism department uh, is an incubator, like where the young minds are getting treated properly to be better explorers and the ambassadors of Naglen. And, you know, me personally, uh, from my own experience, I'll be sharing with you. Um, for the past years, I've been tra traveling on motorcycles and it was such a, you know, great privilege for me to learn every day. You know, every day is a learning day and I could see that there were, uh, even during our, uh, like training, training time, you know, there were like a lot of different age camps were there, but still, every day is a learning day. You know, age doesn't matter. And even during my uh, traveling time, I've learned so much, and I've seen how beautifully God graded Nagaland. It's, you know, it's totally incomparable. I've been to Ladakh. The Ladakh, it's really famous in India. Everybody goes to Ladakh, and they have seen, you know, like when I was going there, I've seen so many people were there, uh, traveling, the family were there, the kids were there, and when I was just looking around, I could see nothing. There was no trees. There was no, uh, you know, beautiful places like Nagaland. But then people love to go, people love to come and enjoy their uh, hospitality. People love to see, you know, the people out there were so skilled in their business. They know how to deal with the people. So I have realized that, wow, I mean, come to Nagaland, they should really come and see Nagaland, how blessed we are and how beautiful it is, no? Even the diverse culture, traditions and the food that we have is totally different from the rest of the world, I should say. And um, 
Oh, so when coming back to uh, Nagaland, when I was solitary for 26 days, I was meeting the young people, I was meeting the bikers club, I was meeting the uh, women organizations, and we were just having conversations. And I could see so many uh, trimmers, I could see pain in their eyes, I could see, you know, we share our own stories, and that's how we ins get inspired, in we em empower each other. And that was the time the government, the tourism department also came, came forward and then appreciated and then also, uh, you know, met me in person and then they encouraged me for, um, you know, contributing to the society uh, in every little bit that I did. And that encouragement really boosted me up, you know, uh, the, gov the uh, government of Nagaland tourism department, they said that, okay, since you're, tra since you're gonna travel the whole India, I want you to be the brand ambassador for Nagaland tourism. Now, when the deadline came, I realized that, oh, I need to learn so much again. I need to, you know, uh, go back to the roots and then learn some, see, when the government uh, uh, see the potentials with the young people and then they, uh, you know, they reach the right people, the young people also, they learn and then they come to realize that it's my responsibility. It's my duty to learn now. If I go out, I'm pretty sure, so, uh, like many of us here have studied outside. Now when the people want to interact with you and they ask you, okay, so like what Nagalian all about? Like how many tribes you have? You no, know, it like small things matters a lot. And it is the time that, you know, uh, <laughs> facing all of that time only we realized that, wow, I need to learn so much back home. So these skills, this training, tour guide training really boosted me up. My, my traveling for the past few years had totally skilled up now. And I have been confident in myself that, okay, now I can say something uh, more, you know, in a more better way, portray Nagaland in a more better way. And since I have also followers on Instagram, on social media, now I can probably put up and confidently say that, you know, now like we have this, we have that, you need to come and see how close we are. So uh, I really appreciate the uh, tourism department and the planning coordination uh, department as well and the youth net for creating such great privilege for the young people out here. So um, uh, this time um, after the tour guide training again few of us like around 14 of us we went to uh, Uttarakhand, Missouri. We were there for 16 days training and all of my days I was on motorcycle riding. I've never, I don't have this habit of like walking that much. So it was like a great challenge for me, like, you know, camping, like, camping for 10 days in the jungle, like carrying on tents, carrying on bags and, uh, you know, your own food ration for 10 days. It was more than 10 kg, just imagine. <laughs> I, 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 I cried, like, you know, even the tear drops, like, I, I cried and my friends were like really supportive. They even carried some of my stuff like that. So that was something out of our comfort zone, you know, and, uh, you know, like, I was really happy and I was really, um, you know, glad that my team met, the team that we had, we were encouraging each other and the boys were like carrying our ladies stuff also on the way. So that's how we completed our tours. Then I realized that we as a young people, we also need to appreciate First of all, I thank God, and of course, we would not be here if uh, our Honorable Minister, Sri Nima Kruno, sir, did not sanction the money to have <laughs> this wonderful training. I also would like to appreciate the tremendous amount of hard work, concern, and personal involvement in, the, in, 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 in raising and in the attempt to raise the life of the youth of Nagaland, I want to appreciate Srimati Hekani Jakhalu, founder of YouthNet. I want to thank the director of YouthNet for the fantastic briefing that she's been giving us all along. After Odin 
spoke so many interesting things about this course. I don't think there's any more justification in saying anything else. But yes, I want to make a few personal suggestions. Uh, not because you've not been trained enough, you've been trained in a Hannibal Center, you've been trained by the best of trainers that we have available in Nagaland. So anything else that I would try to tell you would in fact more be an insult to them. <laughs> so it is just my personal observations. First of all, I would like to tell you, as you already know, that as tourist guides, you, you are going to be the frontliners for the tourism industry. Many people may be having different notions about what scope and potential our state has. But I tell you, the only industry possible in a state like Nagaland is the tourism industry. And I want to encourage you, all the tourist guides, by telling you that I personally feel that you are in the right direction because we have a lot of potential in tourism. And so as we say, you are going to be the first frontline workers. So you are going to be very important in this entire the growth, the trajectory of the tourism industry. So one or two personal inputs I want to give you, you must have been told already. Please, uh, besides all the technical aspects, please be very well dressed. Please maintain a very good sense of personal hygiene. I think these two are these two are very, very understated but very, very important aspects of the tourism industry. We need to present ourselves in the most clean and hygienic manner. And uh, uh, so everything else again comes tight with this. As tourist guides, you know, we had talked about, somebody had talked, yeah, Onan had talked about how important storytelling, I mean, a director. Actually, everything in life is about storytelling. If you see American history, America does not have any history at all. American history is just 200 years old. But you go to America, you go to any part of America, you'll see the Statue of Liberty, or you'll see some huge, uh, statue of, an, of a golden eagle somewhere. You go, you see a plaque, you know, you know, written in brass, you know, on a brass plate. It's all storytelling, it's all storytelling. And then as far as storytelling is concerned, I think our state has enough storytelling to tell people. So I want to request you, please be very, very well prepared for whichever destination that you're being taken for. As Benjamin Franklin said, if you fail to prepare, you are preparing to fail. So, you know, the impression that you give is the impression which is going to get carried away by the people. I still remember the charisma, the energy that you need to have. I remember I went to a church in, in Goa. And me, my, my family, my, my sons, we never forget the guide who was there in the church. The kind of energy that he had in him. He would say, walk with me, walk with me, and the smile, the dazzling smile. Oh, we guys like, you know, we, we really, really enjoyed him much more than the church. And that's how you can make a lot of beautiful memories. You'll be surprised. I have a lot of guests who come to, I'm from the Central Service, I'm from the Indian Revenue Service originally, so I have a lot of friends who come to Nagaland, you know, I arrange their travel, I arrange their, you know, hotels, they come back and you'll be surprised that many times they come back with very good accounts about the travel guides. The guides that we have, the guides that take them to Konoma, the guides that take them to Tutema. I was surprised. And they would come, they would say, I would say, how was your trip? They would say, yeah, it was good. But the tourist guide was a fantastic fellow. He knew his stuff. He told us every single thing we needed to know. I was so happy. So I am absolutely confident that all of you would be, would turn out to be like that. And there is another personal request from my side. You see, there are a lot of haters, and especially in the era of social media, in this area of social media. So every time everybody likes, likes to criticize the government, you would not believe 
the number of people who would like to criticize the government. I would like to request you, please, when once you have settled in as a tourist guide and once you've started moving on in life, please do project the government and the work that the government is doing from your level. You know, there is there is a saloon called Iosis. It's 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 a it's Shilpa Shetty. If you know Shilpa Shetty has a has a group of has a uh, you know the beauty uh, saloon. It's called Iosis. They have one branch in Guwahati. So I sometimes go there for my haircut. And the person who gives my haircut normally is in high demand. There are three or three or four of them. The, the person who does your massage, he's also in high demand. Then I, 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 I try to ask the people, you know, where are these guys from? I, I was very happy to find out that they were all from Nagaland. And believe me, these three people, boys, and they're all boys by the way, they had a long queue for them every time. So when I, when I happened to get my turn, I asked the guy who was cutting my hair. You know. So where did you get your training? He said, we got my, I, I got my training along with the other guys here. We got our training in Delhi. I said, how did you go to Delhi? He said, government sent us. I said, government sent how many of you? He said, government always, used to always send us, send around a group of 100 or 50 for these trainings. <coughs> I said, by the way, you guys are in so much demand. He said, yes, wherever we are, in the, throughout the country, we are in high demand. I said, then by the way, why don't you, you know, why don't you all come into the social media and why don't you come in support of the government when everybody is criticizing the government? Why? Then he, he didn't say anything. So I requested him, please, see, you are doing such a good job. You are in such high demand. You are talented. But you are not appreciating the help that the government is doing for you. It's only criticism, criticism every single time. So please, whenever you find people criticizing that the government is not doing anything, please do your part, give back to the government, support the government of the day, and say, no, there are people like us who have been helped. It will go a long way in helping the government to help more people like you. So I want to personally request you, please, when you go out, into the social media world, put in some good word for the government of the day. Okay? You have to do that because it's always just 100% criticism. Other than that, the tourism department with the support of Minister Sir, Planning Minister, of course, every time, I, I hope you know how the government functions. Any department wants money, it has to go through Sir. And if he gives the clearance, then we are okay. If not, we are not okay. So with his continuous support, the tourism department will always be there for you, especially the tourist guides here. We we have we are working on some things which will really make your life worthwhile in the days to come. So I wish you all the best and God bless. Thank you. Thank you. I must be punctual, but today it was just because of unavoidable circumstances. I could not come in time. Because we had a meeting uh, along with the chief minister, but before the meeting was over, I <laughs> also come here. Now we have a cabinet meeting, but that I have to. And then my apology to our chicken. <laughs> but in the morning, before we start the meeting, I have uh, told our chicken minister that I have one program with you that. And so 
I may move out early. Then we have discussed about the tour guides. And he was also relating about the person whom he met one lady, a tour guide in Japan. Very her name was Snow White. <laughs> He said, oh, with that, uh, she entertains every one of us with her name, and then it was a very, very interesting. <laughs> so, humor it is uh, also very important. You see, as I stated by my friend Tito, tourism industry. If we really need we can do it. There are reasons why we can do it. If you see Singapore, Singapore is a small place. It is not even the size of Imago district. But the world knows Singapore. If we can develop our state and if we can bring people from outside and if we can perform, the entire world will know us. And I know this is possible because you know what is the good quality that we have? We the people of Nagaland, we are good in our hospitality. We are good in making friends. And our dish is very simple, but then people enjoy. Then, the most expensive commodities of the world, the English language that we have, and our accent are not like the other Indians or South Indians, but our accent. It is easy for others to understand. So we can do so many things, but there is one thing. When tourists come, if we cannot show them what they want to see, then it will be a shame. Now, in most parts of the world, people they go around all these different cities, different countries, all these civilized countries, now they want to come back where it is naturally grown. The natural beauties. I have also been to all the continents, except Antarctica. I'm planning to go to Antarctica also. <laughs> this is a very difficult area. Human habitations are very less. But I want to go and see if they can do some this thing. Okay. This tourist guide, you are a very, very important person. And you have a lot of scope. If you are a smart person, because for them there is a cut everywhere in other parts of the world. If you bring someone to the hotels, there is your cut. I told you, give you. If you take someone to the farm, then your gun is there. 
and there are so many people, they have not seen what is a river running down from a mountain. And in other parts of the world, others are sharing, even if we travel kilometers after kilometers, we can see the same species of trees or nothing. But ours is so rich in biodiversity that all these mountains and others. <coughs> it is a very, very interesting for them. For us also, when we go to big cities, buildings, skyscrapers, that oh, we are quite interested. But for them also, all these mountains, <laughs> so many trees. It is a win-win situation for all of us. Now, the advanced uh, countries, Europeans, Americans, Australians, and others, they are really doing well, you know. But even now, London itself, they depend on tourists. The London city itself. Then you know, Thailand, now because of the COVID situation, things are different. If not daily entry of tourists into Thailand is 7,000. So if 7,000 people going and then coming out, you see, how much they are earning? If you just calculate one person spending 20, 30,000, how much the economy will grow? Now, just before the pandemic, I went to Laos and Myanmar. Now, only we are sleeping. Even Myanmar itself, now they are having a problem. But not to talk about Laos, even Myanmar, they are doing well. Their guy, they are having their guy. All these uh, tourists coming, and they are well experienced. And even the city like Mandalay and all there, it is a well-planned city. And within no time, more than 80 star hotels, 5 star hotels have been set up. So, even when in Myanmar, they are doing well. For us, we also must pick up. And for which we are all having a concern. But as I said, if we don't have to show to others for what they want to see, it will be a failure. So now we are talking about Netherlands, Sophie. Everybody is growing coffee. Honey, we can call our land of coffee and honey also. We can do well because when we are when we're reaching this all this biodiversity, we can survive for the whole year without cheating the people. And though they want to see our culture, tradition, and then, you know, every tourist, they want to stay in a, not maybe not in a good buildings, but in a very clean, 